Okay, hope everybody's doing good out there. In the pursuit of truth, what we got to realize, guys, is that we're never going to get everything right. In other words, the whole 100% truth won't be revealed till we're basically glorified. Kind of like what Paul said in Corinthians 13, 12, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. So we're all working with sort of a dimmed point of view, okay? And sorry for the background noise, guys, if y'all hear wind or anything like that. I always have a problem with that in my videos, but because of our fallen state, uh, God, God could still reveal truth to us, you know, but it's not like we're all knowing, okay? Nobody is. And this is what a big problem, the carnality problem, if you will, what I'm getting at is basically our interpretation of the Bible mostly. This is why there's so many denominations, so many factions and isms and etc. People, people just interpret scripture through several different means and most people have it wrong. You know, uh, they have most doctrine wrong. People, they're just out there interpreting the Bible through their experience alone when their experience doesn't even line up in the first place with scripture. A lot of people just make up things, come up with beliefs based on their own eisegesis. And, and for the most part, a lot of people are they're just trusting what other people say. They don't even look it up for themselves, you know. It's sad that people interpret the Bible through their... Mainly, people interpret the Bible through their feelings. Okay? How they feel is basically their measuring stick through their life. They just live according to their feelings, okay? Even if 99% of the time their feelings don't line up with truth, you know. They read scriptures like Hebrews chapter 6, 4 through 6, and immediately conclude it's teaching salvific laws. Okay. So then there's a whole arsenal of scriptures they've just thrown out of the Bible. And they cannot make it work, no matter what they do. So they end up believing one thing or the other. Either you can lose it or not. So they believe you can lose it, even though the Bible says you can't lose it. Okay. They don't delve into context or proper hermeneutics and the tools they, they need to understand what the writer's saying in the writer's context. Okay. The surrounding context. Reading the whole chapter helps. Okay. You don't pluck verses out. This is what these people do, though. They don't compare scripture to scripture. They come away with a conclusion based totally off of a hunch that, of what they feel like. Like, this is what I feel what the writer's saying, basically. You know. It's all about feelings. Like, here's another one. Take Hebrews 26 through 29. Uh, my gosh. Hebrews 10, I think it's 26 through 29. I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Everybody knows this one. For if we go on sinning willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Boom. Right there. And to the average person that doesn't even look up anything, you know, uh, they're going to automatically conclude, oh, see, see, you know. But you can't do that with God's Word. It wasn't made that way, okay? God's Word was not made in such a way where you can just glance at the Scripture and come away with a split-second conclusion with what it says. You must delve into it. You must look at okay? you got to go through this. You have to make the sacrifices in your life to actually look up something and see what it's saying. What is that? Chapter, uh, verse 27, But a certain fiery looking for, fearful looking for judgment, fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. So boom, there, that's where they get their salvation laws. Oh, you keep on sinning, no more sacrifice for sins, and all you'll do is feel condemned all the time and scared of hell. Okay, let's find out what it's talking about, though. You can't just think of something, saying something, and then go teach it to a congregation and ruin their lives. All right? God made his word in such a way he didn't make it too hard to understand right but he did make it to where you can't just close your eyes and mumble and bumble and stumble through it sorry about the wind guys it keeps picking up okay so it's according to feelings okay they feel condemned and scared to death of hell all the time these salvific lost false teachers 
So <clears throat> they're all putting two and two together on this, see, because I keep sinning. Well, listen, but then most of them claim they hardly sin and they're going to heaven because they hardly sin. But it's, <laughs> it's, you have to look at what the writer's saying. The theme in Hebrews is the sin of unbelief, okay? And the Jews getting so close to being saved, but not getting saved because they went back to the sacrifices of the temple. And there's no more sacrifice for sin when you do that, when you trample underfoot the blood of Jesus Christ. But they don't want to hear that. 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall ye be thought worthy, who hath trodden under the foot of the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Okay. And then they take, oh, you're going to die without mercy when you reject Moses' law. See, this is what happens when you keep sinning. Hold on for a minute. The writer is not even coming close to saying that. He's comparing of if you trample on the blood of Jesus Christ by rejecting his sacrifice through your unbelief, what do you think is going to happen? There's going to be no sacrifice because you're rejecting Christ's sacrifice. And then it goes into the example about Moses. If you rejected the law of Moses, you die. It's not saying, see, they, they don't understand. It's, it's showing an example. None of these people come close to what the writer's saying, trying to get across. They, they don't search for surrounding context. They zero on in a verse, like I said a while ago, and they pluck it out to apply their Ill illogical conclusion. This is what they do. All right? And they grow their children up to do this. You know, everybody grows up as a child... If you've grown up in a Christian home, you have gotten some false teaching. There's nobody alive that's ever been brought up in perfect teaching. Nobody is. Like I said, we, we, we look through a dark glass right now. But this is why we're called to be Bereans and go look this stuff up. And you can't have Scripture set against Scripture. It's just not going to work. So, feelings... These people are scared out of their minds because they have a wrong belief about God. And that's where the root problem is. You have a wrong belief based upon a wrong premise, based upon wrong interpretation of Scripture. If Scripture doesn't interwove and connect perfectly together without contradiction, you have a wrong belief somewhere. Right? Right? Because there are no scriptures in the Bible that says you can lose your salvation. There's none. There's scriptures that seem to be saying, oh, you fall away, this and that. But fall away does not automatically equate to going to hell. The parable of the sower. People fall away. People believe for a little while. Get caught up in the world. Does it ever say they die and go to hell? No. People conclude that falsely. Because of the way they feel. They feel condemned. They think they're going to be condemned. Because Satan is the father of lies. And that's how he works. An agent of the flesh. He puts thoughts in people's minds. They believe them. Okay. People. You know. A lot of people are deceived. Just from good old fashioned. Ignorance. You know. But I'm going to end this. Because I got to do some other things here. But. Just wanted to make this little video guys. For you guys. Just kind of explaining how uh, not everybody's got everything right, but a lot of ways that it goes wrong is you trusting what people say without you looking it up yourself, and you taking interpretations of Scripture that set Scripture against Scripture. That's that's just a basic thing not to do, right? And these people are behind pulpits. They go to Bible college, and they have a congregation, and they've been preaching for years, for decades. And they don't ever think about these things. But God bless you guys. Have a great day.